maybe we wore it out. I don't think so. No, nah, they wore it out. You turn around because it's going back to get it. Get 11. One. Two. Oh, shoot! I knew it. I knew it. It never can be that easy. We should have popped this man in the head a few episodes ago. Don't be afraid. Very still. That's your company line, Billy? Lucas, somebody, where is Howard? Ah! Like you ugly piece of shit. Yeah, we gonna mess with you until 
Hey, you find it now. Whoa, dude. That's the donation box. I know. I'll just use yours when I come back. I mean, if we still want to play. Yeah, but what if you want to join another party? Not possible. Oh. What? It's been three months. They'll come back. I know they will. Mike. I love you too. Absolutely. Come on, Mike. Get man up. Can I read? That's a long letter. Something I've been wanting to talk to you both about. And then I left some egos out in the Aww. woods and you came into my life and for the first time in a long time I started to feel things again I started to feel happy I can't mess with y'all but lately I guess I've been feeling distant from you like you're you're pulling away from me or something I miss playing board games every night Making triple decker ego extravaganzas at sunrise, watching Dang, westerns to get out, still jacked up. Off. <clears throat> but I know you're getting older, growing, changing. And I guess, if I'm being really honest, that's what scares me. It's moving, always moving, whether you like it or not. And yeah, sometimes that's painful. Sometimes it's sad. And sometimes it's surprising. <laughs> growing up, kid. Don't let me stop you. Make mistakes, learn from them. And when life hurts you, because it will, remember the hurt. The hurt is good. It means you're out of that cave. Oh, gosh. Why did you play this sad song? Stop! Nah, Hop is in the upside down. Y'all stop playing me. No, ain't nobody okay. Hop is in the upside down. Yeah, they played this song season one, I think episode three. Yeah, when they were running through the woods. When Joyce was running through the woods. I think Jonathan caught up with her. I remember music like that, y'all. And they thought that Will was dead because they found a body in the lake. That's when this song played. But Will wasn't dead. Maybe it's foreshadowing. Hop's not dead. Hop is not dead. I can't mess with y'all. I don't know how they sold that house. That's a that's a talented realtor. Oh, this is is this Russia? Yeah, this is Russia. Look, it's like a little dark. expectations y'all like for real like so much of that episode exceeded my expectations I don't even know what I expected I felt like they were definitely gonna defeat the mind flayer but I didn't know exactly what route they were gonna take to do it but um 
Y'all, I'm really glad that um, it, at the end of the day, um, I will say this at, about the episode. At the end of the day, I'm glad that it didn't take the route of season one and two, where essentially it came down to Eleven defeating the Mind Flayer. Like, really, this was truly a team effort. Like, it had to be a team effort. Like, it was a team effort. You know, things had to come together for the team, both in season one and season two. Season one to defeat the Demi Gorgon, and season two to defeat the Mind Flayer. Like, things, everybody had to do their part and things had to come together, but Eleven pulled the weight and did the majority of it. But then you see, like, um, with this particular season, Eleven was kind of taken out of the picture of last episode, and furthermore, into this episode where she could not use her abilities. And even, you see, at the end of the episode, or end of, you know, yeah, at the end here, her powers have not come back, and this has been a three-month time jump. So that's really crazy to me that whatever the flare did to her, like, it totally knocked her off. So we don't know when her abilities are going to come back. So this truly came down to, like, um, a team effort, like, and really it came down to Joyce and Hop at the end of this season to, like, shut the gate. But, um, Y'all, this was a really phenomenal finale. This was phenomenal. In my opinion, it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and y'all, I knew we was going to see like Susie in episode 8. I said, I'm telling y'all, Susie is real. We're going to see her in episode 8, I bet you, because they've been playing on Dustin this whole season talking about Susie ain't real. And Susie's a cute little girl. And she had Dustin around here singing the Never End of Story while everybody around here about to die. And, yeah, I would make fun of Dustin, too, until it's no longer funny. I would make fun of him, like, for real, for real. Like, yo, we were out here in the car going 80 miles an hour trying to escape the mind player, and you and your girlfriend right here singing a never-ending story. Yes, I'm going to punk you until it is no longer funny. We're absolutely doing this. We're absolutely going to be singing this song every time we're in your presence. Absolutely. I agree with Max and Lucas. Absolutely. Sing it every single time. Like, essentially, when, um, yeah, essentially, when they were able, when Billy was able to get Eleven there, like, she was able to recall some of his memories, like, his happy memories of him and his mother before all this other bad stuff happened in Billy's life. So, you see that he no longer becomes under the influence of the mind, like, of the mind player, but the mind player kills him, which is crazy, y'all, because, um... I don't know how I feel about that, y'all. Like, not about Billy dying. Like, that, to me, that wasn't even the emotional aspect of the of the episode. Um, was Billy dying? Like, I, I, I think I was more so in disbelief that they actually were going to kill Billy because I kind of thought that, that, that he was going to die after Eleven recalled that episode and told him, oh, you, or not episode, but recalled that memory to him. And, like, it was just, like, that moment, and they had those flashbacks, and she said, you were happy. And so then when he tried to essentially, like, hold off the Mind Flayer to prevent the Mind Flayer from infecting Eleven, like, the Mind Flayer killed him. Like, I don't need you no more to shoot. So, Mind Flayer killed Billy. So, I thought we were actually not going to lose Billy because, like, it seemed like he had been useful up to this point. And I kind of, I was thinking, like, if we were going to lose Billy, then it, it would have seemed like he would have become one of the flayed and made up the Mind Flayer. But that's not what was done with him. So, I think it gave you kind of like a false hope that Billy wasn't going to die, but he did end up dying. So that was crazy. I was like, man, I didn't, I didn't really actually expect that, that the rule of bees was going to hold true in season three. I don't think we don't have no more bees in the group. So, yeah, we don't have no more bees, y'all. So I don't know what's going to happen next season. Um, Billy, um, I felt bad that Billy died because you knew he was under the influence of the mind flare. So all the things he did, it wasn't his doing. It was because he was under the influence of the flare, of the, yeah, the mind flare. And then when he died, he died heroically because he was trying to save Eleven and he ended up dying. So you feel bad for him and for Max, you know, because, I mean, she still, she had love for him. That was her stepbrother. Like, she loved him. And so, yeah, I don't know how they, I, I, I mean, they have this whole story that, like, all 30 people died in the mall. But this was still 4th of July, though, right? So some of the people who died left the 4th of July, you know, celebration and festivities. 
and at the time the mall was closed. So how are you gonna say that the people died <laughs> at the at the Star Court Mall when the mall was closed? So how do we explain that these people died? Like why did all why did these people come to the mall when the mall was closed and they were at the Fourth of July like celebration? How did these people end up getting to the mall? Especially like there were children too who were part of the flag. So that's very weak to me. And I cannot believe they killed 30 of the town people. This is Hawkins. It's probably not a big, it's not a big town. 30 people died? That is major. We're not talking about a bar. We're not talking about a billy. We're talking about 30 townspeople died. That is major, like from season one and two, where you can cover up, okay, we can do a cover up a bar. We can do a cover up a bar. But 30 people in the town died, y'all? That's a lie. And then to include police chief Hopper, like they, you know, they put him in the article. Joyce went ahead and, and, and um, destroyed the key. And it leads you to believe that Hop is dead. Um, Hop ain't dead, y'all. Hop ain't dead. I'm like, Hop in the upside down. Um, I don't know how he escaped. But just like they talk about Brenner from season one ain't dead. If Brenner ain't dead, Hop ain't dead either. I'm telling y'all dead honest truth. If Brenner is not dead, Hop ain't dead either. I don't believe it. Y'all ain't gonna convince me of that. So, um, you had that. And essentially, um, y'all, the phone kind of cut off. But, um, yeah, we had that whole thing that happened as far as, you know, Hop, they, they're saying he died. Um, you know, after, like, they say, you know, if you, you know, closing the gate will destroy the mind flayer, so they destroyed the, they destroyed the key that was keeping the gate open, but you can see that the gate is still cracked, so does it just have to heal over time? I don't know, but I, I'm like, what did they do with the mind flayer? Like, did they just burn it, and then it just melted or something? I'm like, listen... Yeah, that mall is, is closed for a hot minute. They ain't opening that mall for a hot minute. There, there's going to have to be a serious cleanup crew with Dr. Owens and them. And you had a brief cameo of Dr. Owens at the end. And I'm like, dude, like, we called you like two days ago. Where you been at? Like, I mean, it had been two days. It's been like a day. But I'm like, dude, we said this was an emergency. And you come in after Hot done died, supposedly, after we done killed the flare. And now all of a sudden, you, you and your helicopters come and show up. We ain't here for that. Then let me tell y'all something. Steve, how Steve Harrington came clutch yet again. Put some respect on Steve's name. Yes. Y'all, Nancy and the kids was about to get got. They were about to get bodied by Billy in this car going like 40 miles an hour about to hit Nancy because Nancy could not shoot out no tires from this car. Listen, Steve and Robin he drove like, listen, they hit, they, they allowed Billy's car to hit them. That's what I saw anyway. I don't know if Steve hit Billy or Billy just hit Steve, but I think Billy, like, not Billy, but um, I think Steve, like, and Robin, like, they drove kind of, like, in between and Billy hit them. So they didn't like, so yeah, Billy didn't hit Nancy and them who were outside the car. Because I was like, listen, I don't know why nobody is moving, but y'all need to move and get out this car. And everybody act like they in the state of shock. Nobody moved. Steve came clutch yet again and saved them. Because Steve said, no, I got to go save them. We got to go save them. And Steve and Robin went to go save them. Listen, Steve is the number one OG. Like, I'm mad about the whole thing with him and Robin. But, listen, like, I really, I still really like what they did with Steve yet again this season. I just feel like Steve keeps going up. Now, you're going to get your game right, Steve. You're going to get you a girl in next season. They, they played you with Robin, but that's cool. You're going to find you another, you're going to find you a girl. So, anyway, um, you had that going. Um, and then we had the whole three-month, like, flash forward. And it's crazy that Joyce actually sold the house and is moving. That's kind of what got me, y'all. I don't know. I have to watch other people's reactions when they get to season eight. but um, Or not season eight, but episode eight. But that's what kind of got me, like, emotional, y'all. Like, I'm like, are they for real moving? Like, and then Will and the kids, they right here hugging and emotional. I was like, okay. Uh, I was like, and then they got Hop, you know, narrating in the background after Eleven is reading his letter. 
Um, and it's like, so Eleven is going to live with Will and Jonathan. And it's just like, wow, it's the end of an age. And they're like moving. Like, it's kind of like... There's no turning back. You know what I'm saying? How things just change and how they move. Um, more than just the physical aspect of it, but there's just like no going back to the basement with the Dungeons and Dragons. Like there's definitely no going back to that now. And it's like even what we were at the beginning of the summer, there's not there's no way to even go back to that with everything that happened. So like, man, like, you're dealing with some, like, real adult stuff, like, people moving away, long-distance relationships, the loss of a parent, the loss of a sibling with Max, like, grief, like, there's some, like, for real adult stuff that we deal with this season that they did not deal with season one and two. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, like, that is crazy like real stakes were in this season and that's what I really liked about it because as they're maturing and they're becoming teenagers and then subsequently adults you realize that the stakes become higher that it's not just you know this fun little time in these games and we're just gonna do this little quirky little stuff and save the world like we can really lose people that we love doing this stuff trying to you know save the greater population save other people so i don't did they even say where they were moving to i don't even remember so that's gonna be crazy to see where we are season four with you know will jonathan and 11 moving and kind of like being out of the picture of the day-to-day and 11 ended up telling mike that she loved him um but yeah that was like really that kind of that got me y'all that got some tears out of me at the end of that, I was like, nah, y'all doing too much. Then we had the after credit scene where they talked about, um, we're in Russia, and then they have these people in prison, and then, like, they go to open the one door, and they said, not the American. I'm like, well, listen, bet you the American is Hopper. Y'all ain't gonna convince me that Hop is dead. Uh, Hop is in a Russian prison. He got away because the Brenner got away. I'm telling y'all, Hop got away. Hop ain't dead. So... They, they kind of leave it open. They get the Russian guy and they put him like in this little cage and then they open the door and there's like a little demigorgon like dark. But that joint looks human, y'all. Did y'all see the hands? It's got a profile of a human. And then it gets up on two legs. Y'all, them Russians right here experimenting, yo, turning people into demigorgons. That will be interesting next season because we're going to continue on in Russia. So, y'all, that was crazy. That was really crazy, but um, that's going to be my review for um, season three, episode eight. The lighting is changing. I do apologize again, you guys, getting later, but uh, I'm going to come back probably next week and do a season three review and just kind of let you guys write some things down after I've kind of had time to like think about it. I might actually watch the season through again and then um, just kind of let you know overall what I think about the season, the strongest episodes versus like the, you know, episodes or episode or episodes plural whatever that I thought like I didn't enjoy so much or why after I've had some time to think about it so y'all but this was absolutely amazing I I will say that it was amazing It, it definitely was something I did not expect at the end of the season so anyway guys if you enjoy this reaction make sure you give this video a thumbs up I don't know yet if this is going to be part one and uh, two or if it's just going to be all in one video I probably will split this up into two because there were a lot of good bits in this final episode so it's probably going to be two parts you guys so stay tuned um for that well you'll already see it so it's probably going to be two parts but um yeah, so definitely give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you share it with anyone else who likes reactions and likes Stranger Things Season 3 and watching it. So make sure you do share it with anyone who's doing that. Also, make sure you comment below. Let me know what you guys thought about this finale. Did it catch you in the end? It caught me in the end. Yeah, I don't really cry. Like, yeah, I, I shed a few tears. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I shed a few tears at the end because I was like, I can't believe they're doing this. So, yeah, like... Um, comment below, let me know, did it catch you too? It caught me. Did it catch you? Also, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. Again, you do that by hitting the red button below and hitting the bell next to it so you're notified when I do upload future videos. And again, you guys, 
I thank you so much. I gained a lot of subscribers through Stranger Things Season 3 Reactions. Don't y'all unsubscribe now. Don't be dirty to me like that because I am going to be doing more um, reactions and I am going to be catching up with the other shows that I react to that I've put on hold to do Stranger Things. So again, you guys, I really appreciate you watching. Um, make sure you do, again, stay subscribed and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I do upload future videos. Again, you guys, thank you so very much for watching and commenting and liking my videos. Um, even if you disliked it, hey, you still watched it. I appreciate it. So, anyway, guys, I will see you in my very next video and reaction. Bye, guys.